Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to plot the powder x-ray diffraction pattern using origin. So in the last tutorial, I showed you guys how to convert the raw data file generated using any popular x-ray diffractometer into a readable format. So in the last tutorial, we came up with this file converted.xy which contained the x and y axis values for the XRD pattern. So this was converted using PowDLL and in case uh, you have the raw file only then you can refer to that previous tutorial that showed how to convert the raw file into a readable format. However, if you have these X and Y axis data values then you can continue with this tutorial. So just go ahead and select all these, uh, these two columns and then open origin and paste these into a worksheet. So just press Ctrl plus V. So in the X axis values you have the theta angles and the, in the Y axis you have the intensity of the peaks. So just go ahead and select these two columns and right click on them then select plot, line and then line. So here you can see a nice XRD pattern uh, in your origin graph window. So the first thing that you would want to do is you would want to label the X axis. So it should be called um, 2 theta and the way to enter theta or any other Roman, al um, sorry, Greek alphabet in origin is to just go ahead and click here or um, press control plus G. So that is a shortcut that would select this uh, theta um, Greek format. And then, so theta basically corresponds to Q on the keyboard. So if you press Q on the keyboard, then in, uh, in Greek alphabet, it, you would get theta. So you have theta here and then what you want to do is you want to enter the unit. So that is degrees. So um, you can now get rid of this um, Greek alphabet and enter the units either such as this degrees or you can just um, write O in the superscript format by selecting it and selecting this superscript here. So here you can, uh, so there are a variety of ways you can uh, write um, or label the x-axis so uh, what whichever you prefer however I, I usually prefer writing degrees explicitly so I'll just go ahead and I'm sorry um, and write degrees here however you can uh, do it in any way that you like so here we have labeled the x-axis now the next thing would be to label the y-axis so just go ahead and uh, double click on this um, here double click select all this and write intensity and in the parentheses you can write the units and basically intensity has no particular units and it's just arbitrary units so you can just go ahead and write that so here you have that and another way would be to just um, write ARB in the shorter form so arbitrary units so now we have labeled the y-axis as well as the x-axis now the next thing that you would may want to do you might want to do is you might want to get rid of all these labels or the um, these values because intensity usually um, is measured in arbitrary units as I already said so basically the highest peak is scaled to a hundred and all the other peaks are scaled relatively so basically these don't offer any um, any useful information so you can just go ahead and click on either one of these so and then just press delete on your keyboard so you can get rid of these if you want to and you can also control the number of these minor and major labels or ticks that you are seeing on the axis so just go ahead and double click on this axis I'm sorry it didn't work quite the way I wanted to so just go ahead and double click on it and select tick labels and here you can select the number of minor and major ticks so currently the number of I'm sorry the number of minor ticks is set to 1 so you can just go ahead and select 0 and click on apply so that would get rid of all those minor ticks and you can also select uh, the range from which uh, the y-axis is starting so currently it is starting from minus 20 so you can choose 0 instead of that if you want to so that would just bring the whole graph down however usually um, I've seen it's better to uh, have that kind of offset so I'll just go ahead with minus 20 however it totally depends on you what you want to do with your graph then the next thing would be to edit the x-axis so in the x-axis um, there's not much to do I guess because 
uh, all this information is pretty necessary so um, the only thing that I can think of here is I would like to bring this here because in my XRD diffractor, um, in my X-ray diffractometer, I started the scan from 10 degrees to a to 80 degrees. So I like to start this graph from 10 degrees. So in the scale section, I'll just go ahead and select 10 here and click on apply. So that would um, start the graph from the origin or at least from the zero x-axis. Um, and then what else so this is all basically pretty much it however you can do further changes like um, in case you want to provide more than uh, a single minor tick in the x-axis then you can again go to scale and select the number of minor ticks as five or whatever you want so here you will get more minor ticks in case you want to or you can get rid of them altogether so there's a lot of customization that you can do in origin so that's it and one last thing that you need to do is uh, you need to label these peaks so usually the peaks are labeled through the Miller indices corresponding to the HKL planes so what to do to label those what you can do is basically just pretty much copy this uh, text box right here so just click on it and then press ctrl plus c on your keyboard and then just press ctrl plus v in um, near different peaks so just click with your mouse and then press ctrl plus v so you are pasted this text box in a lot of uh, peak locations and then what you can do is just double click on it and write down the index of the peak so let's say the first peak was 100 the first peak was corresponding to the 100 plane so you can just go ahead and do that then double click on this and select or write down any other plane like 102 so that way um, you can basically then again you can copy these and then paste them on different peaks and that way you can label your peaks with the corresponding h scale indices or the miller indices that is so that is how you would label the peaks and finally you can um, basically in the legend you can write down whatever and this black line corresponds to in my case it is basically the alpha fe203 so again alpha can be written using the greek notation by pressing ctrl plus g on the keyboard and writing a and then ctrl g back and then fe203 so so this would be handy if you are plotting multiple um, xrd patterns in a single win window and I'll make another tutorial that shows you how to plot multiple XRD patterns in a single window using the stack plot so here is that option in the stack plot so you can just uh, in the next tutorial I'll show you how to perform a stack plot so probably we'll be using stack lines by Y offset in the in that video so that would be uh, your answer if you want to plot multiple XRD patterns in a single window so that's it for this tutorial i hope i have covered all the necessary basics and one more thing uh, you can do with the peaks is you can analyze them to calculate the crystallite size using the Scherer formula so in order to do that usually what you need to do is you need to perform gaussian fit on a peak and i have already made a video on that however i'll just quickly uh, go ahead and show you how to do that so just use the zoom uh, um, option to zoom into a peak and then what you can do is you can select the data points corresponding to the peaks by using this regional data selector and then select this region on which you would like to perform the Gaussian fit and then go ahead and click on analysis and then peaks and baseline and you can go to peak analyzer multiple peak fit and all that stuff so I'll not show that whole process in detail in this video because I've already made a tutorial on that so you can just go ahead and check that out however for this tutorial you can just uh, clearly see that it is only using the selected data points that I have provided and then you can select the peak functions in my case I'll be using Gaussian and then just go ahead and click on OK and then you can just go ahead and double click on the peak so here it is and then oh, click on fit And there you go so here you if you come back to the graph window then you have this table displaying all the necessary data of the Gaussian fit and you have the 
all the information, especially the most important information for the uh, crystallized size using shell formula would be the FWHM, which is this quantity right here, 0.2394. And remember, this is in degrees, so you'll need to convert that into radians while you uh, do that experimentally. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. And in case you did, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and have a great day.